ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار the parents are the origin of man they are the cause of our existence in this life and this is why allah azza wa jal combined his right to be worshiped alone with being kind to them with honoring them with being dutiful to them allah says in the quran your lord has decreed not to worship other than him and to be good to your parents among the best deeds any person can offer in his life especially in these blessed days and nights of ramadan is to honor your parents to be kind to them to be generous with them abdullah ibn mas'ud may allah be pleased with him said to the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam which deed is most beloved to allah the prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam answered prayer performed on time abdullah ibn mas'ud sa said then what the prophet said honoring one's parents this is the answer of the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam we spend so much time inquiring asking trying to detect which is most beloved to allah azza wa jal when it is right there in our backyards in our homes there is a difference in culture between us muslims and the non-muslims especially those who live in materialistic in materialistic worlds such as in the west there they treat their parents rudely they don't obey they do not respect and once the parents are old they throw them in a house for the senior citizens for the elderly and never ask about them until they die muslims are way different muslims compete with their siblings to honor and be dutiful to their parents they compete and consider oneself an uncrowned king if he wins the honor of hosting his father or his mother in his house there was a case in saudi courts a couple of years ago 
when two men went to the judge complaining one was in his late 60s and the other was in his 70s they were fighting over who gets the right to host his mother in his house the mother testified and she said i would like to be with the eldest not for anything just because the youngest relatively speaking who is in his 60s he has so much on his plate and he would not be that easy taking care of me the man started weeping and crying in court because he lost that great honor while we or some of us keep on pushing their parents to the other siblings trying to buy their way out of caring for them islam makes us in debt to our parents while they're alive and after after the death and people when dealing with their parents are three types the first type is the one that honors his parents he's dutiful to them never harms them not even with a bad look and in addition he goes out of his way trying to please them this type is rewarded by Allah the second type of people is the one who does his duty nothing more nothing less and this person is sinful for just doing his duty giving them a house providing them with food paying their electricity bill is an obligation you have not done something extra claiming that you're not abusing them or not harming them this is your obligation you're not doing anything extra this type is sinful and the third type is the one that does not do his obligations and in addition he harms them he abuses them he saddens them he depresses them this person is definitely doomed the prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam there are three whom allah will not look at on the day of resurrection and will not enter paradise one of them was the one who disobeys his parents disobedient of parents is one of the major sins in islam to the extent that allah azza wa jal prohibited us from complaining by simply saying uff when they tell you to do something allah says don't say uff to them or chide them and say kind things to them with respect how can one be dutiful to his parents how can one be kind to them and honor honor them by default when people are kind to you you must be kind to them this is human nature there is no test in this for you the test is when your parents are not kind to you when they are abusive when they go out of their way to make life difficult for you here you express your obedience to allah azza wa jal by obeying them and being respectful to them to the extent that Allah Azza wa Jal orders us to be kind to our parents even if they order us to make shirk. Even if my own parents tell me to disobey Allah, to associate others with Him, one would think that I should not speak to them. Allah says in the Quran, but if they endeavor to make you associate with me, that of which you have no knowledge do not obey them but accompany them in this world with appropriate kindness this is the way muslims deal with their parents the salaf 
if you go to their biography, you will be astonished. Some of the Salaf, and this was reported by Ali ibn Hussein ibn Ali ibn uh, Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with them. He would never eat with his mother from the same plate, out of respect. He fears that he may stretch to part of the food that his mother just looked at it and desired it. Just because she looked at it, he refrains from eating with her until she is satisfied and had enough. Urwa ibn Zubayr, the son of Asma bint Abi Bakr, may Allah be pleased with them. The son of Zubayr ibn al-Awam, one of the ten heaven bound, one of the seven fuqaha of Medina, Urwa ibn Zubayr, says, by Allah, if they make you angry, do not look at them sternly because a person's anger is detected when he has a stern look. And he says, by Allah, he is not dutiful who looks straight at his father's eyes. Sometimes when you're having a discussion, your own son looks at you in a way that is inappropriate. Though he did not say a word, that look is sufficient to admit a person to hell. May Allah save us. Muhammad ibn Sirin, one of the great tabi'een, when people who do not know him, if they see him speak in the presence of his mother, they would think that he is sick. Compare how we speak in the presence of our parents, how we raise our voices, how we shout. One of the Salaf, his mother called him from the end of the house. So he replied, she didn't hear. He shouted, yes, mother, I'm coming, so that she hears him. And then he felt guilty and he gave 10 of his slaves for the sake of Allah in repentance. He didn't shout. He just wanted her to hear. Compare how we treat and deal with our parents. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal is in the pleasure of one's father. And the anger of Allah Azza wa Jal is, the ang is in the anger of the father. Aqulu qawli hadha. وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه أجمعين The mother in Islam has great importance The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام was approached by a man and he asked O oh, Prophet of Allah, who among the people is most deserving of my good companionship? The Prophet said, والسلام, your mother. The man said, then who? The Prophet repeated again, your mother. The man said, then who? The Prophet said, your mother. The man said, then who? The, the Prophet said, والسلام, your father. The mother has three times the need of you being good to her than your father because your father usually is a man and he's strong and he is harsh and hard and rarely you would disobey him because he has the ability to force you while the mother is the weakest link usually we think of a mother's instruction or a mother's prohibition not to be serious. When the father says no, it is a no. When the mother says no, it might be if you wish. 
if you want. And if you pressure me a little bit, I may say yes. So we keep on insisting, not paying attention, not caring for our mother. While Allah Azza wa Jal says, and we have enjoined on men, and we have enjoined on man to be dutiful and kind to his parents. His mother bears him with hardship and she brings him forth with hardship. And the bearing of him and the weaning of him is 30 months. If you try as a man to hold your child for 10 minutes, your biceps would ache. For half an hour, you're willing to give your child for adoption. Your mother stayed with you so many years, each day and each night. When you had your fever, she was next to your bed. When you were starving, she was cooking for you. When you were in need, she was always there. Now, at the autumn of her life, where do you find yourself? How do you describe yourself? Have you ever seen how you treat her? Do you kiss her hands and feet every time you see her? Do you show her how valuable, how important she is in your life? Or you make her feel that she is redundant? This is her duty. She's nothing but a person waiting to die. Among the greatest deeds we can get our sins erased is to be kind with our mother, is to be soft when speaking to them. A man came to Abdullah ibn Umar. He was shivering, scared of his sins that he thought that it would definitely take him to hell. Abdullah ibn Umar asked him, do you have your parents with you? He said, I have only my mother. Abdullah ibn Umar said, if you fear hell, and if you want to enter paradise by Allah, if you speak to her softly and feed her, then by Allah, you will enter Jannah as long as you refrain from committing major sins. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ, like many youngsters. Oh, Prophet of Allah, permit me to go for jihad. They want to die in the cause of Allah. They want to travel. They want to, they want to strive. So the Prophet said ﷺ, do you have a mother once or twice? And the man says, yes. The Prophet said, go and be dutiful to her. And the man is insisting. Being dutiful to mom is not a great thing. I want to die in the cause of Allah. In the third time, the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Woe be to you. Go and stay next to her feet because Jannah is there. Paradise is at the feet of your mother. People in the West also always ask, what's the ruling on celebrating Mother's Day? Muslims don't have Mother's Day. Every day in our life is a Mother's Day. We do not need to imitate the disbelievers in honoring them one day per year. Every single day and night is a Mother's Day to us Muslims. And being dutiful to them is not limited to their life. Even after they die, Islam tells us to be dutiful to them. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was approached by a man and he said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, is there anything that I can do to continue honoring my parents after they die? The Prophet said Alaihi Salatu Wasallam, yes, pray for them, ask for forgiveness for them, fulfill their last wishes, honor their friends and uphold the ties of kinship which you would not have were it not for them. Honor their friends even after their death. 
Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, was once, was once on his donkey when he saw a Bedouin. So he dismounted, chit-chatted with him for a while, and afterwards took off his turban, put it on the Bedouin's head, and gave the Bedouin his donkey. So his companion said, may Allah have mercy on you. This is too much. Imagine giving your car keys to someone and giving him your clothes. This is too much. These Bedouins would be more than satisfied if you give them little money. He said, this man's father was a friend of Umar, my father. And I heard the Prophet wasallam say, the best of good deeds is for a son to uphold ties with his father's friends. If you want to be dutiful to your parents, check on their friends. If you're truly a practicing Muslim, you have to connect to your kinship, whom you would not have any connection with had it not been to your parents. So check on your uncles, your aunts, your cousins, all those who are related to you through your parents for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, even if they don't call you back, even if they don't invite you, even if they abuse you. Our biggest problem is that we do what we do, not for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, not for the sake of worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal. This is why we don't find the taste of worshiping Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. When we're kind to people, is because we are waiting for them to reciprocate, to meet our kindness with similar kindness. And if they don't, we stop. This is not how Allah wants us to be. We have to begin from today to honor our parents, to love them, to respect them, never to argue with them, never to look them straight in the eyes, to show people how respectful we are to them and how humble we are truly to them if we succeed in doing this we will gain the pleasure of allah azza wa jal as the prophet had said the pleasure of allah is in the pleasure of the father in another narration the pleasure of allah is in the pleasure of the parents oh allah azza wa jal have mercy on our parents as they have brought us up in this fashion. O oh Allah, forgive our parents. O oh Allah, those who have died from them, expand their graves. Make their graves a garden of paradise. Make them happier in their graves than they were on this dunya. O oh Allah, if our parents are alive, O oh Allah, give us the success and help us to be kind to them, to be dutiful to them, to honor them, to make them happy, to make every moment of the rest of their lives a happy moment where they raise their hands and make dua for us. Hada wallahu a'lam wa nisbatul ilmi ilayhi aslam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa aqimis salat.